Are we good? So here's, I brought a couple sticks with me today, guys, okay? Two, yes, that's exactly what I mean. I mean two. That I literally just picked out of my front yard at about 7.55 this morning as I was getting ready to come up to church, okay? And did you know that fire can be made by rubbing two sticks together? I mean, I, I watch a lot of survival shows on like Discovery Channel and and places like that, and they're always rubbing sticks together to make fire on these, you know, on these survival shows. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, sometimes it is. Can you imagine being able to start a fire by just rubbing two sticks together? Well, I'm gonna see if we can just, you know, make a fire right here. Okay. Make it, we're going to light this bar stool on fire, okay? What do you think? No. Think I can do that? I hope it's not real. Okay. Well, you guys probably need to come up here and see if you can feel any warmth or see if you see any smoke or embers or anything like this. Because I'm, I'm going to work really hard. I'm probably going to break a sweat rubbing these two sticks together, okay? Uh, Back up. I don't want you to catch on fire, Lincoln. This, this could be dangerous stuff, okay? Here we go. Are we ready? You got to pay attention. See if there's any smoke or fire. Oh, come on. I'm doing exactly what they do on the TV shows. No, what they do on the TV shows is they get one and they go, no, do you, not, not. Do you see any fire yet? No. no, no All right, no, there's no, no fire no, yet. No, you need to go, not. Have any smoke yet? No. Can you feel any warmth coming off this so that we can get warm in here and it's not cold in here anymore? Kind of. I don't even see an ember. Do you see an ember? A little red spark that starts the fire. Oh yeah. Whew. Oh my gosh. All I see is tree bark that's gonna ruin your seat. It's gonna make my pants dirty. Well, have a seat, guys. Maybe, maybe if I tried some different sticks. You think if I got some different sticks, it might work better? Thicker sticks. I think. I think if you just had the right type of wood, sometimes that's what's required. I mean, I'll admit it. I've never started a fire by, by rubbing two sticks together. And there's, and there's really only a few people that, that can do it really well. I mean, when you think about how many millions of people live in the world, there's only a handful of people that have really learned how to start fire by rubbing two sticks together. I mean, mm -hmm. And I've seen it work. But you really have to know what you're doing. A matter of fact, you probably need to be a survival expert or a master of outdoor living so that you can really know the right woods to get and how to set it up to where it all rubs together and it causes friction and it starts a fire. And I could keep going and working and trying to do everything just right for a long time and never get fire. Okay? Couldn't I? Right? I could keep rubbing those sticks together all day and probably never get fire. All you need is to take all the tree bark off. Okay. Well, sometimes being a Christian can be just like that. We could try really hard to get everything right and to be very, very good and still not get into heaven because there's nothing you or I can do that is ever going to earn our place in heaven. And that's where our verse of the week comes in this week. Ephesians 2.9, it reminds us that salvation, God saving us, that's a gift to us that we don't earn. Look back at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. It's going to be back up on the screen. Our verse of the week, verse 9, is marked in yellow up there. This is God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. You know, verse 10 is actually one of my favorite verses because it reminds us that we are God's masterpiece, but that's a, a message for another day. What I want us to think about this morning is that 
There's no action or work that we can do that's ever going to get us into heaven. Only God can make that happen. And it's through his son, Jesus Christ, when he, when he died on a cross for our sin, when, when he gave up his life and took our punishment for all the wrong things that we have done and all the things that we have done that has made God sad. Lincoln, can you stop throwing around the hat for a second, bud? I mean, to me, it's crazy to think that Jesus took my punishment. Look, I'm the, older, I'm, I'm the oldest kid in, in the house I grew up in. I have a younger brother and a younger sister. And I can tell you, hands down, I would have never taken a punishment for either one of them. I've tried to do that. Yeah? Phew, you're better than me. Oh. But that's what Jesus did when he died on a cross. He took what we, the punishment we deserve... And we get the gift. And getting into heaven is God's gift to us. When we ask forgiveness of our sin, which is anything we say, anything we do, or anything we think that hurts God's feelings, we get to go to heaven. And we get the promise of eternal life with God forever. So, let me ask you a quick question as we get ready to pray and get back into a worship song here in a second. When someone gives you a gift, do you say... Ah, that's very nice. How much do I owe you? Or do you say thank you? Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you. are not going to take a, a birthday gift and ask somebody how much money you owe them, right? Or a Christmas gift and ask them how much money you owe them. Sadly, a lot of us and a lot of people think that you can or you have to earn your way into heaven by doing a lot of good things in life and doing the right stuff. And when God gives them that gift, they're like, oh, what a great gift, God. Thank you for the gift of saving me and giving me eternal life. Now, how much do I owe you? When we simply should just look to God and say, thank you for giving your son up to die for us and take our place so that we can have an eternal life with you. Let's pray, guys. God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for a chance just to be here and to worship and to be in your presence. Father, I hope, pray that you help all of us remember the amazing gift you gave us when you sent your son to die on a cross for us. Help us remember just to say thank you for that gift. We love you, God. Amen.